Hello and welcome. First of all, this series will be not about how to make the perfect track or something. It will be, yes, more for the musicians, because it will show what the new versions of LMS can do and how you maybe can set up your project in a more convenient way to, yes, get the things faster done than before. Okay, so first of all, we are going to create a new project. We are going to save it. And uh, then we are going to get rid of the things we don't need, like the kicker or the automation, the beat and bass line, the sample line and the triple oscillator, because we are going to arrange them differently but you will see it in a minute, what I mean that, by that. So, next we are going to set the BPM to about 150. Since my song will be hard style, and that's why 150 BPM is a good measurement. Then we are going to begin with something very basic like for example the kicks to get the beat done so first of all I will go in and load in two different kicks as you could hear then we are going to create another or a new channel down in the FX mixer and we are call it accordingly and we are going to root these kicks into the FX channel 1 so now we got this done and if we play these kicks they are both sending their signals into the first channel here but this comes with a bit of a problem, which I will explain later. But first, I will go in and, and explain how these samples are going to work correctly. Because in LMS, you need to set the base note of the sample. So, in which note the sample is being played. So you can pitch it up and down in the correct manner. So this sample, as I know, is played in C. So I will put these bass notes on the C itself and close it again. And I'm doing the same thing with the second kick. Now we got this done. We are going to name our bass line. and the 1 till 8 means I, I'm planning to do a 8 measure beat at least for this kicks and since we got this set up we are going to go in and create a beat <coughs> I'm sorry so first of all these kicks will not be pitched in any way so I'm going to I'm not going to care about something like yes chords or something that won't be necessary in this case and since I first want to have one fourth measure of this one 
and then I'm going to change it into 1 24th or also known as triplets and I'm going to continue this oh that's something wrong very bad 1 24th so it takes the correct measure of the note and I'm going to change it to last note written so I can set this up accordingly and, so, and how you can see it's going to fit into one measure four times I'm going to take this and copy it and paste it another time and I'm going to repeat this is full uh, wrong first I select them then I'm copying and take them further away and now we got eight measures as I mentioned before in the naming then I'm going to go in and alter the speed in a, in a way so it got some kind of offbeat on the last of the 8 measure and on the first. You will see later on why I'm doing this. It's related to the beat and the melody I'm going to show later. So don't worry about that yet. Since we are done here we can copy this pattern and take it to the second kick and insert it so we got them playing on the same beat so yeah let's hear how this is sounding as you may have noticed if you take a look at this kick channel it's clipping a whole lot. It's going through the roof and that is something we don't want. And that's why I'm going to use an effect. <coughs> Called the, uh, the fast look at limiter. It's basically a limiter with some kind of compressor it got an release time and I will turn the tempo synchronization on and go for one fourth note and I'm going to close this now when I play this you can see and hear there is no clipping anymore and if you take a look at the channel it's now stopping right before it's going through the roof, I guess. So yeah, this is the first part of the channel configuration. <coughs> I'm sorry. The second part would be this one, a kick out channel. At least I like to do it that way because if we root this kick right into the master channel we got not much control of the whole thing so we are going to delete the send into the master channel and we are going to send it into the kick out channel and the kick out channel will Yes, we'll work as a second master channel right before we are routing it to the last channel when we are going to mix everything. So yeah, every instrument will get an out channel in the end. I'm going to take this at 40% and I'm going to leave it like that. So if you play the kick, you can see it first starts at the kick channel and is then rooted into the kick out so we can make whatever we want we can 
go in and make a second kick channel and parallel process the whole thing or we can just leave it like that EQ and things like that will be done in the second part because I need to set up something for that but as you can see this would be the first thing to make last thing we are going to insert the pattern we are just done into the song editor and give it a color as you can see it's a dark red and name it properly so that would be done last of all we are going to save this very important and I'm going to do a new version save so it takes this version and just adds a number behind it so when we are going to save it the last version will be yes at the point before so if we do something wrong or anything goes wrong we can just revert to another version before that it's very important again I guess or I think at least so as you can see down there it was saved a second time yes furthermore I would suggest putting down the channel itself to about 97 percent so you don't have any chance of getting clipping even though we got the look ahead limiter on this channel yeah so thank you for listening and we'll see us in the second part see you So now we are going to take a look at, <coughs> I'm sorry, a look at the frequency spectrum of these both kicks. So in order to do that, I'm going to add span and choose the master settings. So now we can see what's happening first of all I'm going to take the first kick open it and add an equalizer now that's done we can start equalizing first of all I'm going to start playing this kick and we can see the spectrum in here and then I'm going to take a look at the equalizing itself while playing. As you can see, this kick has quite a good low end and the second one has also an interesting low but I'm going to take the low frequency part of this kick so in order to do that I'm going to decrease the high shelf by about once 1.3 decibels A second thing, I'm going to go in the frequency area of about 200 and I'm going to de decrease this area for about 3.33 decibel. So now, if we play it, It's starting to sh take shape. 
last but not least we are going to use this low shelf and decrease the bandwidth and increase it about uh, yes 5.5 .5 decibels to increase the low end but also I'm going to take it further into the back so it doesn't interfere with this cut around here so yes that would be the first one now we go in and play the second kick but first of all we are going to add an equalizer again and we are going to play it to see which frequencies are useful to us again we only want to have the low and cut out first of all so we are going to need a high pass filter Second, so oh, I closed it too fast. The high shelf is going down as well. And I'm going to part next we are going to take a look at the hard style kick itself but this will be in the next part I'm going to close span and delete it out of this channel and take another safety safe or however it would be called yes so I see you in the next part thank you